Great. Good. Good evening. Welcome to the League of Women Voters of Curry County's Zoom Go Beach City Council Candidate Forum. I am Georgia Nellen, tonight's moderator. I'd like to introduce our voter service co-chairs, Charlie Alexander and Mary Jane LaBelle. Mary Jane will be co-hosting the Zoom along with League member Colleen Bunn. Charlie will be our timer. This is number four of our four candidates forums. These forums are recorded and will be available on channel 182, currycountyvoices.com, lwvcurry.org, lwvor.org, and vote411.org via YouTube. The broadcast of tonight's Gold Beach City Council Candidates Forum is being furnished as a public service by the League of Women Voters of Curry County. Any reproduction, recording, transcript, I'm sorry, transcription or other use of this program without written consent is prohibited. Let me begin with the League of Women Voters mission statement. The League of Women Voters, a nonpartisan political organization, encourages informed and active participation in government, works to increase understanding of major public policy issues, and influences public policy through education and advocacy. The League does not support or oppose candidates running for elected office. Any voting person can be a member of the League of Women Voters. We have both men and women members and invite you to join. Because of COVID-19, this is a virtual candidate forum, a first for the League of Women Voters of Curry County. Our thanks to Paul Addis of Coos Bay Library and a fellow community website partner of mine for his assistance with Zoom. Candidates tonight are Go Beach Mayor, Carl Popoff, incumbent, and Tammy Kaufman. Go Beach City Council position number two, Chip Bradley and Beth Barker Hildago. And for Go Beach City Council position number four, Becky Campbell, incumbent, and Jeff Crook. All candidates running for these contested positions have been invited to this forum. Here are some ground rules for tonight's forum. Unless you are asked to speak, please keep yourself on mute. Candidates will be asked to speak in rotating order. Initial speakers have been determined by verbal number drawing. Each candidate will be given three minutes for their opening statement. Once that portion is completed, we will go to the question and answer section of the forum. Questions have been collected from the public and league members prior to the forum. You will have one and a half minutes to respond. Our timer, Charlie, will have Mary Jane put up the 30 second sign on the screen when you have 30 seconds left. When your time is up, a stop card will come on the screen. Candidates, can you see the cards? Okay, great, thank you. I will now introduce the candidates. Uh, going first, candidate for Go Beach Mayor, uh, Carl Popoff, you have three minutes. Uh, thank you, Georgia. I want to also thank the league for doing this. Um, you know, I've been the mayor for the past 16, well, not the past 16 years, but for 16 years now. Prior to that, I was a city councilor and also was on the city planning commission. So in short, I've got about 20 years of service to this city. I've tried always to remember two things. Number one, the government is here to protect and serve citizens and their property. Number two, that I'm a, <laughs> I'm a servant to everybody. It doesn't make any difference what their party affiliation is or anything along those lines. If they're a citizen of this city, then I serve them. Uh, we have you know, obviously, like a lot of cities, we have a few problems. Uh, homelessness is one. We've got uh, also the affordable uh, housing is another. Affordable housing, we've been able to help others uh, 
get started and, and try their best to remedy that. Homelessness, uh, that is a, even a stickier problem. And I am of the firm belief that it is uh, best left up to the private sector. Um, I, first of all, uh, government should never be a landlord anyway, as far as I'm concerned. But really, I think that we have more than anything, there's two other problems. Uh, one is real, the other one is quite potential. Number one is the COVID. Um, the virus has hurt us all. I uh, believe that it's important to get back to work because I think there are three elements to uh, health. I think there is a physical, there is a mental, and there is a financial aspect of it. And all of three of these have got to work together. Um, the other one is quite potential, but nevertheless, it is uh, running rampant throughout many of our cities today, and that is the anarchist. Uh, and I just wanted to say and make everybody uh, very, very aware of the fact that uh, Gold Beach is not Portland, and I'm not Ted Wheeler. Um, that, if elected, uh, re-elected, then I will continue to do my very best for the citizens of this community uh, to continue to protect them and their interests. So once again, I just want to uh, thank uh, you and the League for hosting this. And, um, well, we'll see where it goes from there. Thank you. Thanks, Georgia. Yeah, thank you. Tammy. Got to unmute. Okay, thank you. Um, I really appreciate the league for hosting this forum. I'm glad that you're able to innovate and figure out a way to deliver this product that you have done for years and years and years um, and still be able to reach the citizens by asking questions of the candidates. I've always found the forums to be informative. Um, I, my name is Tammy Kaufman, as you probably know by now. I'm a city and Gold, Gold Beach City Councilor, and I believe I'm the trusted leader in these uncertain times. Uh, Mayor Carl is a great man, and I have no bad things to say about him, um, and I know that, that we will work together whether I win or lose. He, um, and I do believe that tough times require um, tough leaders, and I think that I am one. Um, I graduated from Gold Beach uh, High School here in 1986. Uh, that makes me 52 if you want to do the math. Um, I got my associate's degree many years later at Southwestern Oregon Community College, and then just a couple, oh, five years ago, I got my bachelor's of science um, at Eastern Oregon University. And I got that in philosophy, politics, and economics. It was a very interesting degree they offered online. I learned a lot. Um, I've served the city in, in the beginning when I was just a young kid. Young kid and um, I started out on the strategic planning committee, um, Gold Beach 2010. And then I was appointed to a budget committee position. Um, when uh, Sam Wilson resigned from the city council because he moved out of town. And Mayor Schaefer gave me a shot um, as the youngest city councilor in Gold Beach. I believe I was 25 um, in 1993 and I served that appointment until 1998. And I did not run for election that year. Um, I was then appointed to the planning commission and I served on that capacity for 11 years. I was the chair uh, often uh, times. And I was also on the budget committee whenever they had an opening. I was the one that would show up. Um, I enjoy numbers. <laughs> um, I also, that's what I've done for the city. I also, uh, oh, I also serve on the Urban Renewal Agency, um, which uh, I am the chair. And we've done quite a bit with very little that we have to work with. And I'm, I'm blessed that a lot of people worked really hard um, on that program um, so that I could uh, work with the council today to make it happen. Um, it takes a lot of years of planning to make it work. Um, but we've started a housing program. Uh, we've helped with some beautification and we don't even have a lot of money yet. Um, it just barely trickles in at this part of the, the funding. Uh, I'm around down to 30 seconds. Um, I'm a business owner. Um, I currently own a property management company that specializes in cooperative housing. Um, I work with places all over the, the state. Um, and I'm getting really good at these remote calls. 
Um, we have new challenges um, here in 2020. I think those are going to continue over the next couple of years. And I think we need a new leader and I am the one to do that. I can adapt to change and reach out to citizens. I think we can do town halls with this type of method and we can succeed together. Thank you. Thank you, Tammy. All right, now for Gold Beach uh, City Council position number two and Beth, it's, you're up. <laughs> Hi, thanks League of Women Voters for putting this on. Again, I ditto what Tammy said, being um, creative and um, using technology yeah, during these difficult times. I appreciate the effort. Um, and Mary Jane, you had something in the chat about a little more light. Is that better? <laughs> I turned on another light. So hopefully people can see me better. Um, I am Beth Barker Hidalgo. I am the, I'm running for C2 Gold Beach City Council. Um, and why am I doing that? I um, am probably considered fairly new to the community. I'm coming up to nine years in January, 2021. But from day one um, of relocating here, I knew that this was where I intended to be for, um, you know, to live out our, our careers and our retirement here, my husband and myself. And so I dove in, I, I get involved in community. I feel um, if you're going to live in a community, um, if you can, then contributing to um, that community is, is kind of a civic duty. I was raised, you guys, I'm originally from New England, raised by staunch New Englanders who were very, pounded into me that it's your civic duty, vote, 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 <laughs> get involved. And I'm raised by a woman who um, had extreme challenges and never once let any of those challenges um, deter her from, um, from her goals. And I, it's in my DNA <laughs> to, um, to pursue um, goals in, in my life. And one of my goals is to be more engaged at the civic level and to help shape our council in a way that I think I bring um, a unique lens to the council because of my involvement in both the coordinated care organizations, community advisory councils for a number of years uh, with all care for four years plus and now with advanced health for a year. Um, I get, I'm involved in the processes of community health assessments, community health improvement plans, and I feel like I have the unique opportunity to build a bridge between those experiences and those, um, those that input from our community to, um, at the council level, so that when we're looking at strategic plans, short-term, mid-term, long-term planning, we can look at that community health improvement plan and see where can we integrate um, the uh, outputs from the work groups that are engaged and you know so and and I would like to address the homelessness but I have 30 seconds and there's never enough time to address the homelessness so um, <laughs> we'll get to that I'm sure. <laughs> hey thank you Beth. Uh, Chip Bradley why don't you go ahead uh, thanks Georgia and thanks to the women, legal women voters. Uh, it's been a while since I put my hat in the ring for anything. Um, those who don't know me, born and raised in Gold Beach. I left long enough to get my degree in psychology from U of O, uh, decide that city life was not for me. I like be able to see my neighbors smile, say hi, and not, and when they wave back, get all, all five fingers. Um, I decided to, to run at the, at some urging from some friends who thought I sh that they liked what I had to say in, in other places wanted to have my voice be heard. Um, mainly, the platform I'm run running on is make sure that our make sure to maintain our city city services. Make sure everybody wants clean water, want our toilets to flush. Make sure our police department, our fire department, have everything they need to to do their jobs so we can continue to be proud of them because we're. We're really blessed in this little town to, to have a really good volunteer fire department, to have really, really good police department. And every once in a while, we need to fi fix a pothole or two. Um, one of the things that, if possible, the, the way the world's changing with COVID, we see uh, 
I'm seeing a, there's a lot of opportunity that maybe we can ha get some economic growth in our town, help help our economy as people find ways to work from home, bringing outside money in. And um, I think also to the other thing is that if you start to look at some of my history, I'm versatile, versatile enough. I've done a lot of things throughout my life. I started, I've bucked, bucked hay as a kid. I've worked in restaurants. Uh, after getting my degree, I worked in the developmental, the developmental disability group homes, started as a in, entry level support tech, worked my way up before I moved to the county, got to where I was writing service plans for the, or the residents there. Uh, moved the county county mental health and left after we had a budget crisis that really showed me that the mental health program needed to be reformed. Having three clients who commit suicide over a period of six months decided to at that time my my now former wife and I decided that it was best for me to stay home with our son because he was just born. We wanted someone with him, and then I became went in the business for myself and it was time to return the workforce. So I think all these experiences gives me the, a good insight in pretty much what everybody goes through deciding to live in Gold Beach. Um, winters are tight. Jobs sometimes hard to find, uh, but also how to just keep your nose to the grindstone, stay grinding. And that's what I want, want to bring to the city council. I want to, whatever the next four years is going to throw us throw at us because none of us expected something like COVID, but I think I'm versatile enough that no matter what life decides to throw at us, I can handle. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now for a go beach city council position number four, Becky, you get to go first. Hi. Uh, thanks, uh, Georgia. Hello, my name is Becky Campbell, and I've been a city councilor here in Gold Beach for the last six years. I was elected to a four-year term and then appointed by Mayor Popoff for a two-year term. Um, I moved to Gold Beach after a career in law enforcement. I worked for the Oakland Police Department in Oakland, California for 20 years. I started as a civilian employee and retired as a sergeant of police. Um, I have a bachelor's degree in business administration. Um, my side hustle has always been teaching. I, I enjoy that. I taught classes at our in-house police academy. I taught classes in the police dispatchers academy and then was hired by the Napa Criminal Justice Training Center to uh, teach in their dispatch academy. And this was in addition to my full-time duties as a law enforcement officer. Um, I retired and moved to Gold Beach and wanted to continue to contribute to the town that I live in. I've always done that. You know, I lived in Oakland and worked in Oakland as a law enforcement officer. So I feel it's important to contribute to the community you live in. Um, and that's when I was elected to city council. Um, again, I believe I said I've been a city councilor for six years. Um, some of the highlights I'd like to touch on that I've accomplished in the last six years was moving Popeye the tugboat. Um, there was a tugboat over at the port. I was able to move that to our visitor center, what we call South Park, so that um, tourists and people passing through could get up and crawl around on the tugboat and play. I was appointed by Mayor Popoff as a liaison between the event center on the beach and city hall. Um, that's been very rewarding. Um, I monitor the spending of taxpayer money earmarked for infrastructure improvements at the event center. Um, many of you may have noticed uh, they're getting their new roof now. We spent a lot of time working to get that done. I was also appointed by the mayor to the local public safety coordinating council, um, which I enjoy doing that as well. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, Jeff. Hello, everybody. Um, my name is Jeff Brick, obviously, and I, uh, I'm kind of the new kid in the block. I thought it's been four years, um, a little over four years, as a uh, city councilor, uh, initially appointed and then elected into office. Um, I've got, 
I've got big, big plans actually for for Willow Beach. Should the uh, should uh, the council agree with me? Um, I'd like mostly to um, do. I guess I'll, I'll guess I'll start with my background a little bit. Um, I've um, I, I ended up graduating in the Dallas, Oregon uh, high school and uh, went to the army and spent four years there. I was overseas. Uh, in a Patriot uh, Air Defense Artillery Battalion. I got to see firsthand the way we were treated overseas and the way that we were looked at. Um, then came back and um, went to school and uh, went to several community colleges before I finally graduated. Uh, I got my, got my degree from the Art um, Institute of Houston. Um, Won a couple of major contests there. I'm actually was was training as a designer. Uh, I was in visual visual communications, and then got into advertising there afterward. There in Houston, and worked there for a, a few years, probably about four years there. Um, won some awards, did well there, and got tired of the corporate life. Just got tired of it. Said, "Hey, I'm coming. I'm going to go visit my parents up there in Gold Beach, um, where here I was, this is where I was born." So I've been around, um, and uh, so I really have, um, I've got to see a few things. I've, I've got different uh, different job backgrounds from painting to uh, uh, managing 9,000 acres of timber land for my, for, my, for my family. I spent 10 years doing that and started interacting with some of the governmental agencies and liked how that kind of felt. And um, that led to my applying for the council um, upon being asked um, by, a, by a neighbor. Um, my future, my, I guess what I'm looking to do is I'd like to really address the, work, the workforce housing issue we have here. I think we need to bring more, more affordable housing in. I think there's a way to do it and, and there's a way to, to not do it. Uh, so uh, I like to. I spent through the past three years building a, a pretty good sized project here in uh, off uh, just north of Riley Creek School, and I think we've um, we we put together a, a pretty good uh, deal. So with that, it's my stopping time. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So now we're going into the question and answer portion of the forum. Questions collected from the public and league members have been screened by the, by the vote, voter service co-chairs for duplications. Each candidate running for the same office will be given an opportunity to answer that question. We'll now present the questions that have been submitted for answers. Again, candidates, you will have one and a half minutes to respond. So I have questions for the city council, but I will also include the mayoral candidates in that because I think that's just as important to hear their answers to the same questions. However, there are a few questions specifically for the mayoral candidates. So I will start off with a question for everyone and I will start off by asking uh, uh, Carl Popoff, Tammy, and then we're gonna go to position uh, number two and ask um, Chip and Beth, and then we'll have Becky Say Chip and Beth, and then Becky and Jeff. <laughs> All right, so keep your places in mind here. The question is, what, if anything, should the city do to provide shelter, food, health care, or other services for the unhoused? Uh, so, I think I addressed that a little bit at the beginning. Um, I do not believe that it is the city's responsibility to uh, get very involved in that. I think it is the city's responsibility and can be the city's responsibility to encourage and to help where needed private uh, individuals and organizations to handle that. So um, once again, I'm very leery of government getting into these type of activities because quite frankly, uh, I've never seen government truly ever do them well. So uh, 
that's my answer. Tammy. Thank you. Um, I do have an answer for this question. Um, I do like the model um, in Eugene where they have, uh, they're basically camps um, and the city did help them. Uh, I believe they, they leased them the land for a reasonable amount to a nonprofit to run them. Um, something like that might work here if we can develop a, a relationship with a strong nonprofit that can make it happen. Um, and I have reached out to several organizations and I've had several appointments canceled on me. So I have not been able to actually have a conversation with an organization um, to actually pick that up. Um, as far as the city being responsible for this particular problem, it really isn't in the city charter. It's, it's not our responsibility, but we do end up having problems relating to it and it tends to become an issue for our police department it becomes a uh, issue for our citizens um, and it's and it's an issue for the people that are clearly unhoused so i have a, a compassion for people that are in that position but i don't believe it gets the city's job to actually solve it but we could partner and help make that happen because we do have more strength than an independent nonprofit would on their own. And if I have time, I'm going to try to explain the reason we have to have a nonprofit do a, that type of thing is if a government agency does it and a person breaks the rules, you have to have a hearing because they have a constitutional right to property. If it is like Oasis Shelter where it's a guest staying there, they can say, sorry, you broke the rule. We gave you a warning. You're out. And they're literally on the street. And that's the difference. If the city ran a program like that and somebody was a problem, we could not get them out for weeks and possibly months. So it has to be a nonprofit that runs it. That's just the way the Constitution was written and the way we've worked around it, where we can work with people that have issues. And when they become a problem and they're a safety threat to others, that they can be removed. So I'm not heartless, but it has to be done by a nonprofit. Thanks. Thank you. All right. Chip? Well, uh, I think both Tammy and Carl bring up a very good point. Um, I don't think it's in the city's purview to be responsible for taking care of the homeless. And, uh, one, we don't have the tax base, even if we did, but we do as a city need to, be, to continue to have pa compassion. We need to be a good partner be able to address issues that these private not and the nonprofits run into such as land use and be ready to assist when we can. Um, Tammy's got a, is a, absolutely right on the fact that you, if it's a government agency running it, there does have to be a hearing. Uh, if you have someone causing a lot of, a lot of trouble for the people that are surrounding them, it'll be very difficult, if not near impossible to get rid of them. That it, that's taken care of by, being in a nonprofit or a private organization. Um, but as far as the city goes, but the city I don't think can be responsible, but we do need to make sure that the, our council and our mayor are good partners to those who are trying to help these people who desperately need help. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, sorry about the phone going off over here. Um, so of course, if people know me, they know this is a subject that's near and dear to my heart, and I work every day in it with the folks that are unsheltered in Gold Beach. And I know that Mayor Popoff has also spent many, many hours, countless hours, um, ministering to and supporting our homeless population in Gold Beach. Um, I'm, I'm um, grateful to hear Tammy discuss the potential for the city to enter into some sort of public-private partnership with a nonprofit to discover what could, what could be done, what the possibilities are. It's always nice to hear that there is a willingness to create space for dialogue rather than just not engaging in the conversation. So I'm enthusiastic about Tammy's response. And we, as the Curry Homeless Coalition Executive Director, I'm very interested in um, becoming a partner with the city of Gold Beach and with our community action agency, which we already are partnering with them. And in fact, we're in conversations now about how we can become a subrecipient of Oregon Housing Community Services funding 
um, to address um, supportive housing programs here in Curry County as a whole, whether that lands in Gold Beach or that goes down into Brookings. It really all depends on, um, you know, the will of the people. Yeah, but I do believe that there is a uh, there is a there is a role for all of our community, uh -huh. our city, our law enforcement, our county, everyone, when it comes to addressing homelessness, because these are community members that live live in our town. So coming together would be advantageous. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay, Becky. Okay. Um I do agree with a lot of what's been said. Actually, I agree with almost all of, of what has been said. Um, I do think that the best revenue that we could take would be to form a 3P, which uh, was mentioned by Beth, a public-private partnership where we work in conjunction with a nonprofit for reasons mentioned by um, Councillor Kaufman. Um, we need that nonprofit so that we can do um, evictions more quickly. Um, and also, history has shown that um, nonprofits are able to self-regulate better in that type of sheltered environment. In other words, the actual participants of the shelter would set rules and regulations. And surprisingly, those are often more stringent than what the government entity or the nonprofit entity was contemplating putting into place. Um, so they're fully capable of, of uh, setting rules and parameters. Um, but the public-private partnership, I believe, is a way to hit that. Um, and doing that with a nonprofit is the way to go. Um, and I believe my minute and a half should be about up now. I can't see the stop signs, so um, I'm guessing my time's up right about now. Thanks. You're close. Thank you. All right, Jeff. Yeah, um, that's an interesting question. And it, it, the thing is, it's hard to start to look at it and go, well, uh, you, know, you don't want to be uncompetitive, you know, you don't want to lack compassion when you're coming up with these um, solutions. Um, but uh, everyone is, is really, my prior experience on city council tells me the same thing that you all said. Uh, truly, there's, there needs to be thought put into it, um, but uh, there's very little the city can do by itself. Um, or that it should do right now, if you look at uh, the way things are written. Um, but that doesn't mean we can't think and, and, uh, and use our heads to, uh, to uh, come up with a better, a better solution, because I do see them around. I've had, I've had homeless at my doorstep. Um, gave the guy a shower, you know, but, but then there's, you know, finding a place to be. And I would go to, my, to, our, to our church and say, hey, can you, can you put some people up? And usually that, that, that's where they go. Um, so I've been asked more than a few times, uh, where, where do I go? I'm homeless. And uh, it, just, it breaks your heart, frankly. So I would say we need to all get together and uh, come up with some solutions that are going to be um, beneficial for uh, the homeless as well as the city. And that's my time. Thank you. Okay, thank you. All right. Now the next question is going to be for the mayoral candidates. And I'll start with you first, Tammy, and then I'll ask Carl. And the question is, what do you think is the most significant mayoral duty and why do you think it, you would be good at that job? Tammy? I think the most significant mayoral duty, because it is a weak mayor system, is twofold. One is helping draft and craft the agenda and two, to carry out um, good meetings. Um, one of the things I've noticed about these types of meetings where we're meeting online, and, and, and most people know that there's two kinds of people. There's introverts and extroverts. Introverts say very little at the council dais. But on these meetings, they will talk. And you can pull out stuff out of counselors that won't say a word otherwise. And so it's been very helpful for me as an extrovert that has no problem speaking first um, to help people 
um, bring that out. And so you get to hear from everybody. And one of my favorite tools when I run a meeting is called the round robin, where you literally ask everybody their input before you move on. So that way you know what's going on. So I think that's the, the biggest role of the mayor is, is working with the council, helping the council priorities move forward. And one of the things that happens in our, our current system is staff controls the agenda. And so the council might have five things they're working on, but it doesn't show up on the next agenda because nobody moved it forward. And my goal is, okay, council, you got five things. What's the most important? Let's make sure it makes the next agenda and make sure we get our stuff done that the council wants, not just what staff wants. I love the staff. They're wonderful people, but they forget that we too have things that we want to get done. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Tammy. Carl, um, you're up, and you need you should put your video back on. You know, I would, uh, Georgia, but unfortunately, I'm hitting here on a low battery now. Oh. So I'm just kind of eking along, and I'm hoping you can hear me. Yeah, we can hear you. Okay, uh, just a second. I'm getting help. <laughs> Okay, can you hear me now? Yes. All right. We can even see you now what, too. <laughs> um, what Tammy was saying as far as the uh, meetings is concerned, uh, that is true. Um, and I have been told, well, quite frankly, in the 16 years that I've had to chair meetings, I've never missed a one. Um, but the other, and it is important, I, I believe, to hold a very, very good meeting. And in short, one where, the, um, honestly, I do things like asking co uh, counselors uh, what their opinions are if, if they haven't offered them, because it's important to me. Uh, and I also uh, rely very much on the counselors. Um, each one of them brings something to the table that, uh, I in and of myself wouldn't know or I'm not that adept in uh, and so it is something to me that is that is uh, uh, very important to have those good meetings but the other thing and this is the one that I've concentrated on more than anything else and the reason I've been able to concentrate on it so much is because we've had a good council we've had good staff and I haven't had to worry about them much like the, the first eight years. And that was to get out into the state and be a member of an awful lot of different uh, committees and boards uh, to make sure, to ensure that the state of Oregon and all of those organizations, ODOT, which I served on for three years, they don't forget Gold Beach, Oregon. We're out here in the boonies, and it's real easy to forget us. And uh, I have done my level best to ensure that nobody forgets us. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Okay, so this next question is for everyone. And uh, we're gonna start and go backwards from our uh, order. So Jeff, you'll get to speak first and then we'll have Becky and then we'll have Beth and then we'll have um, Chip and then we'll go to Tammy and then Carl. So this is the question here. How is the city planning for post-disaster resiliency? We're talking about fire, earthquake, major storms. So Jeff. Wow, well, it's hard for me to answer since I haven't been on council lately. Um, but I can say that I do know that we have um, here on our property, a, uh, a uh, actual container that we keep for the, uh, for the uh, kids down here at the school. Uh, should there be a tsunami or an earthquake or something like that, we have a place for them to go to. Um, they can walk up the hill and they have, uh, they'll have supplies there for them. Um, it's a big deal, this, this thing, because we have to, we know that we could undergo a, a serious earthquake, tsunami event uh, at any time we are overdue. So um, it's important that we be ready for it. And um, 
you know, I think that that's, uh, if, if we don't do something that way, then we are certainly to blame. So we have to have all of our ducks in a row. And um, I know that we have uh, very bus various businesses have, uh, have uh, paths out of uh, the, their, uh, their areas if they're, if they're um, in the tsunami zone. Um, if you have a major fire, um, well, that becomes difficult because we're on a bit of an island here, um, but we only have so many uh, in, in and out type uh, highways. So um, there's only so much you can do there. Uh, anyways, thank you, that's my time. Okay, thank you, Becky. So um, what is the city doing regarding resiliency? Specific disaster. Related, specifically related to the fires and the storms. So more disaster preparedness. Um, the one thing that I can say on that is, uh, well, a couple, um, I have great faith in Will Newdall. He's our public works superintendent. Um, and he has an awesome crew that works for him and they show up in the middle of the night and fix repairs. Uh, they're a wonderful group. Um, but as far as the, the real emergency management system, um, the event center on the beach recently signed a contract with um, Mr. Dumeyer, emergency manager of the county, and he is gonna put his office at the event center on the beach. Um, so that has a lot of wonderful assets for Gold Beach in that we will have an um, emergency center right here in town that we can go to, we can stage at. He's also gonna be able to help coordinate um, large activities that we might have at the event center, like our county fair. Um, we had problems before communicating between superintendents and he said that he would use his resources within the emergency management office He's going to actually put that above uh, the 4-H offices. Um, so we'll have that right in town. We'll be able to coordinate well. And I'm sure my time is up by now. Thanks. Okay. Thank you. Actually, you know what? I'm going to ask this question again because there's a slight uh, slant to it. And I just, and um, so I'm going to just say, the, the question is, how is the city planning for post-disaster resiliency? and that refers to the fire, earthquake, and major storms. So it's a slightly different slant to it. So let's go forward. And um, I think, I, Jeff, I mean, sorry, Beth. Yeah, so um, Jeff, it's interesting. You mentioned the container above the Riley Creek School. I was the public health emergency preparedness coordinator when that project was underway and I helped connect um, Tom Denning to the vendor that they bought the container from. <laughs> so, and and many many maybe you most of you know um, that I did hold that position for three years, and I do have 15 years of emergency management in varying levels as um, an agency liaison to to uh, the Sacramento County Emergency Operations Center. Um, it, I've been a CERT member since 2006. I became a CERT trainer um, here in Curry County um, while I was the FEP coordinator. I established a 60 plus person medical reserve corps um, while I was the FEP coordinator with Curry Community Health to um, with 82% of the membership being professional medical professionals. So it's near and dear to my heart to, to be a resilient community to, um, to I, th I think, you know, I, the way the question is asked is what, how is the city planning as not, not being a council member? Uh, it's interesting to hear that um, Mr. Dumar is gonna move his offices and stage at the event center. I think that's an excellent um, move, an excellent step. Um, and I would love to be involved in, in that discussion if I'm elected and like to be a part of that process. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Chip. Uh, I think some of the first things we need to do as a city is to make sure that one, our citizens are taking some personal responsibility. One of the, you know, born and raised here when I was in college, I almost got stuck in town because we had Hoogastegan and Arizona Beach slide at the same time. So we've always, my family has always made sure that we've kept a couple weeks worth of, of canned food and stuff, stuff 
on their shelves. So if we ever have a supply chain interruption, we know our family's taken care of. And I think one of the things we can do as a city is make, is encourage people to be doing that. Uh, not now, Jada. Uh, sorry. She's little. She doesn't understand. Uh, and then I think we probably do, if we don't already have one, we probably need to have one because one of the things in a major disaster, if we did have a major disaster, we are going to have to have, I would probably be re thinking we'd be relying on our chief of police to help keep people calm because we grew up here. We, if you decided to live in Gold Beach, you are resilient because we don't have a, we have tough winters. It's not always, not always fun. And and even if you, you know, like Beth has only been here nine years, but the fact that her and her husband decided to stay here, they're resilient. I would think everybody that's in this meeting is resilient. Everybody who's watching this is resilient. So in post post disaster, it would be up to the city council be up and make sure that that we're helping remind people that in the panic that we would probably see coming afterwards. And I'm not seeing cards come up, so I'm guessing I'm close, but that's my quick answer. All right, thank you, Chip. All right, Tammy. Uh, thank you for the question. Um, so how is the city planning for post-disaster resiliency? So when I look at what the city is responsible for, the most important things are water, sewer, police, fire, roads. And not very many roads actually belong to the city. The 101 belongs to the, can to the state, and then you've got the county roads that come in and out. So we have to think about what we're gonna be doing there. And I'm, I'm really glad <laughs> to say that we have a dynamic staff when it comes to providing those kinds of things in crazy times. I remember um, when the Checo Bar Fire was happening, um, we were getting some flack that we're not doing enough advertising for tourism. And what people didn't know is that city staff was coordinating with Crescent City, Smith River, and Brookings to actually evacuate the city of Brookings. They were like, we'll take half, you take half. Where are we gonna put them? How are we gonna do that? We don't wanna tell anybody anything like that. They didn't even tell us on the council, but staff was on it and they are like really good. When we had the lighthouse fire a couple years ago on the beach, um, that, scared, that was really scary. And it's just thankful that we had um, the Checo Bar Fire resources to put that out with us because I don't know if we'd have, if we would have crossed the road and then we would have been in trouble. And I look at what happened over in Phoenix and Talent and I have a dear friend, Leon Sharp, that was in that fire and, and thankfully she's alive, but she lost everything she owns. So, it, and those towns have to rebuild. And so we just started talking about proactively talking to um, people like Crook Timberland about maybe helping us um, reduce fuels. And they already have a plan with Coos Forest and our fire chief to start working on the beach and reducing fuels there. And I'm out of time. So thank you. Okay, thank you. Carl. Well, you're talking post-disaster now. Yes. And we have an emergency plan, the city does. But uh, when you're talking post-disaster, what you're talking about is people pretty much um, all for themselves. Uh, I've talked to geologists. I know what will happen if we have that big quake. Uh, there is not going to be an operating police force. There will not be an operating public service, uh, public works. Uh, we don't know what sort of shape that the hospital will be in, which is, as far as I'm concerned, is our greatest attribute uh, for the city. Uh, there is so many unknowns. What I have told people time and time and time again is be prepared for whatever comes. In short, make sure that you have a weapon, make sure that you have food, because you're going to be basically on your own. And according to the geologists and others that I've spoken to, we could be isolated for a long, long time before any real help could get to us. So as uh, Chip was saying, yeah, we're resilient. You almost have to be to live here. Uh, and resiliency, that type of person uh, will, Lord willing, will come through that. But once again, th this is not something that we can honestly plan for anything of that magnitude or a great fire that come, would come rushing through here. 
uh, we would all be busy just trying to save ourselves. Okay, thank you. Now, uh, I have a question for the mayoral candidates, and this time, Carl, I'll have you go first, and then Tammy. Okay. And the question is, how do you make the city a welcoming place for all? Well, you know, actually, it, uh, to my way of thinking, it, um, when you have a police force that uh, never forgets that they are servants of the public, when you have a city council and um, other and employees within the city, staff and what have you, when they remember that they are servants, uh, you can't help but then to impress people and to make them feel welcome. And the other benefit we have is the majority of the people that we have here are just good people. They, uh, they're friendly. They like other people. And uh, they're a welcoming type. So between what we already have and uh, established as far as uh, the city, the city council, uh, and the population that we have here, I honestly think we're doing a pretty good job right now of making sure that people know that they're welcome. Okay, thank you. Tammy. I'm, I'm trying to decipher exactly what they mean by welcoming because that could be, that could have several connotations. <laughs> And there is the, hey, we're happy to see you here. And I remember, what was the 1980s, we had the commercials about wave, uh, wave to tourists. Um, I think we need to make uh, people from California feel more welcome because they feel like we're, we pick on them. But they do come here making some demands. You're not going to get that part the day they said they were going to give it to you. We, we like to hurry up and wait in Curry County. We don't like it. We just live with it. Um, but I, I'm going to take the broader um, explanation of a welcoming place and people of color, people maybe that weren't born here, people that might be of a different religious belief than Christian, which is our predominant, maybe somebody that, that isn't uh, conservative because we're a fairly conservative county. How do we help them feel welcome? And I think we do that by um, treating people fairly and talking about the difficult conversations uh, to have. Um, talk about people that are minorities that are in leadership positions um, and standing up uh, for things that that are right um, even when it's difficult uh, making people feel welcome and our city uh, personnel policy we recently reviewed and it is actually pretty fair and welcoming um, in, in there too we work on discrimination so um, I, I think that's what the intent of the question was and so that's how I'm going to answer it Right, thank you. Okay, so um, now I'm going to have a question that I'm going to have Beth answer first, and then Chip, and then we're going to go with uh, Tammy, and Carl, and then Jeff, and Becky. Okay, so we're going to jump around a little bit. And uh, you're going to like this one, Beck, uh, Beth. <laughs> the question is, what is happening with affordable housing in Gold Beach? Oh boy. <laughs> well, there's there it depends on how you define affordable and there's a very there are varying um, definitions of what is affordable. So I'm going to speak to um, you know the the low income uh, affordable, maybe the subsidized and possibly supportive housing. And what we know is that um, our clients are waiting anywhere from 18 to 24 months to get a Section 8 housing choice voucher. They are, there are wait lists in, you know, um, at subsidized properties here. Grant management manages quite a few. Um, and we're giving applications out left and right, but people are waiting anywhere from, you know, like I said, 18 to, um, they can wait a couple of years right now to get a unit, especially if they're a, a family that's requiring, you know, a two or three bedroom unit. Once people get into those units, they tend to stay in them if they can, um, because they're difficult to obtain. So we don't have adequate number 
of affordable housing. And by affordable, I'd like to talk about the fact that we are a tourist community and we rely on our housekeepers and our laundry workers and our people who pump gas and bag our groceries and, you know, in some cases teach our kids. And they need to be able to afford and to live in our community. And so we need to lean forward and, and, and I know the city has been creative with their urban renewal funding with the white project over at the port. I'd like to broaden that expand, you know, let's look a little further out and see what we can do to um, entice development of affordable housing in, in Gold Beach. Okay, thank you. Jim. Oh, we definitely need to develop some and COVID-19 is not helping as friends, my friends and real estate agent. Um, I just finished working on a, a house that went on the market a, a couple months ago. And as soon as it went on the market, it went for more than the person listed. So that's definitely not going towards affordable. It's work working on places that you know you still can't afford. Um, and I, and I gotta have to agree with Beth that we definitely be, need to be looking for ways to so that the people who are working on our grocery stores, the guys pumping our pumping our gas, the 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 people taking care of the the tourists can't afford to live here, because I've got lots of friends who they, it, it is tight. Um, the housekeeper it, and she makes good money, but it's always tight. So it's definitely an issue in the long run. We need to be looking on how to make it so people can afford to live here, as if the job market doesn't match the housing market we're asking for another bubble like we had in 2008 thank you mm -hmm. all right um i think let's see i believe we have uh gosh i lost the order i oh, think it's me it. Okay, yeah. Tammy, I was that's wondering. what I wrote down. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> All right. So what have we done so far? We have uh, tiny homes and, and its accessory dwelling units. Uh, we were the first in the county to change our ordinances to allow people to put a second unit on their lots if it could fit. And we are pretty generous. It can be up to 600 square feet. It can be an RV park model, which already is built to a code. And I believe we've had anywhere from four to six of those built. I, I have to double check that number. Um, and it is helping uh, because these smaller homes do rent for a little less. And we also excluded that they cannot be vacation rentals. Um, the second thing was using borrowing money from the city to loan to the urban renewal agency. We loaned money to <laughs> Uh, a local developer to build seven units um, that should rent in the $800 range. Um, that's the target at this point, and they should be done by the end of next year, I believe. Um, so that's some of our accomplishments. Uh, some of the things fighting us is state law. Um, as Oregon has become a tenant state and not a fair state uh, in landlord tenant law, it's very difficult to talk people into renting their houses. Um, Grand Management is our biggest partner. They have three apartment complexes in Gold Beach that are all funded through um, low income funding. And we do have the section eight program, but that's a very difficult program to get people in now because they can rent them for more money than what section eight can have. I would like to encourage more group homes and I would like to help if I can find the right partner, um, create a law where people could sublease in their homes and not have to go under ORS 90's complications. Okay, great, thank you. Carl. Well, you know, I uh, agree. Uh, wholeheartedly with what uh, Tammy has uh, uh, has said. Um, that's something that I was going to bring up as well it could, uh, of the things that we have done. There is one other thing too. Um, private individuals uh, building right now and uh, making accommodations available. We've got uh, uh, Dr. Uh, John and, and Hazel Rush are now in the process of uh, uh, outfitting or actually uh, creating apartments in the Rush building. And I believe that there are going to be about uh, three or four of those. Uh, and I've been in to take a look at them, at uh, one of them that is uh, almost done now. And uh, it's really quite nice. Uh, they're looking at more uh, the, uh, oh, you know, the traveling doctors, nurses, and that type of thing. But nevertheless, that 
is a nice indication that uh, things are being done. Uh, the private sector is seeing that uh, there is a need and uh, when possible, they are doing it. So, yeah, I'm actually kind of encouraged by that, you know, by everything. Uh, yes, we still have a long ways to go, but on the other hand, what's nice about it is that we're moving that way. And uh, okay. so I'm happy with that. Thank you. All right, Jeff. Um, yeah, this is a huge issue, I think, for the city. Um, we have a problem with, um, uh, it's just hard to get workers. I mean, no, nobody can find good, good workers around here, nowhere for them to live. Um, we are, um, presently, um, presently we are working on trying to come up with some workforce housing, um, Curry, Curry Properties is. We had a large development that's very expensive to start off with, but, uh, uh, my advice early was to do workforce housing, and I think that was, uh, and I'm talking high quality, low, I mean, small footprint, so you don't have it going crazy for price. Um, get something out there. Uh, we've got places to put them, um, but we need to get, uh, get going on that uh, right away, and uh, that, that is a clear, currently something we're planning, and also opening up some of these areas that are, um, Looking at areas where we can where we can change the urban growth boundary to accommodate um, these areas where we could possibly get some more housing and to take away from it those other areas where we will never be developed um, can help with that. Um, I also believe that uh, uh, you know some uh, more apartment type complexes or apartment model type things could be done uh, quickly, and there are areas uh, around the city that actually would be good candidates for that. Uh, that's all I have for you. Okay. Thank you. Becky. Okay. Um, what uh, our urban renewal agency did, and that agency is chaired by Councillor Kaufman, what we did is we provided a local contractor with a uh, low interest loan. That was a loan that she was referring to that the city of Gold Beach loaned money to the urban renewal agency, the renewal er, urban agency then loaned that money to um, what uh, candidate Barker Hidalgo mentioned, the white property uh, or white project, which is down um, by our port, um, seven units uh, renting in the $800 range. Um, then as uh, Councillor Kaufman mentioned, the accessory dwelling units, um, that's been a boom. We were uh, the first city to do that. We were ahead of, ahead of the curve. Um, this is a, um, a report. Um, the housing action plan. We're doing really well in regards to what our steps are to uh, fulfilling that. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, we have uh, the, the probably the last question of the forum. And so I'm actually going to go back from where we just started. So I'm gonna have you, Becky, answer it first, and then it'll be Jeff, and then it'll be Carl, and then Tammy, and then Chip, and then Beth. So the question is, what will be your three top issues to address for Gold Beach if elected or reelected? So- Three top projects. Issues, um, yeah. Project issues. Okay. Issues and projects are different. Could you repeat the question one more time? I can't. Okay. It's actually issues. What will be your three top issues to address for Gold Beach if elected or reelected? Okay. The three top issues that I will address. Um, the first is I think that legislating during a pandemic um, has and will continue to be um, a difficult hurdle that we're gonna to have to overcome. Um, it makes the give and take interactions that you normally have with people in the audience, with being in the same room where you can actually see and, and read body language of your fellow counselors. Um, it just makes what we do more difficult. So that is one of the challenges that we have. Um, I think the way to alleviate that specific problem would be to 
have strong connections with our constituents. And as an existing counselor with, with uh, seven years of experience, I have built and established and forged relationships that I think are um, invaluable during this critical time. Um, one of the other things I would like to accomplish. seconds. Ooh, that was quick. <laughs> is to uh, continue the relationship that I forged with the event center on the beach. I'm a liaison in, in their expenditure of taxpayer money. We have collected, um, we should have about $300,000 by the end of the year that we have collected um, towards infrastructure improvements at the event center. And I'm really proud of the strides that they've made. Thank you. Thank you, Jeff. Um, yeah. Um, well, number one, I think it'd be uh, work on finding um, places to put workforce housing. That's number one for me. And uh, also streamline um, uh, a packet for developers so that when they come in, uh, they can uh, more affordably uh, build homes, um, get homes in here, um, work on ways to uh, reduce or, or defer SDC fees for developers. I think that's a big deal. We're talking $11,000 or more. I don't think Tammy could correct me on that if I'm wrong, but I know it's a lot of money. And if you're, what if you just want to bring in a little park model? I mean, that's a lot of money. Um, your, your place could only cost $23,000 and you have an SDC charge, of, well, I don't know, whatever it is. Um, so I would, I'd be wanting to work on that. I'd also want to work on um, continually um, finding um, 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 something to bring people to Gold Beach in the winter. I think that it is dark and dreary here, and I'd propose something like a festival of lights or something to get to get the area lit up and get more people to come in um, and uh, and draw attention to the area and in a, in a time when we could really use them um, and uh, fill up our hotels and motels. Um, and the third thing would be to uh, uh, again find a better way to work with COVID-19 uh, issues and, uh, and try to get, uh, make sure that we're doing the right things so that uh, we don't uh, incur issues down the road. Thank you. Thank you, Carl. Well, to begin with, like Becky, I think the um, uh, Councilor Campbell, that um, the COVID thing has made things uh, rather difficult. It's been made difficult for uh, our merchants and what have you. Um, I actually, uh, a few months ago, took a walk up and down the street and just thanked the merchants uh, for uh, staying open, those that could, and for doing what they did and making the, helping them to understand that uh, the city does indeed truly appreciate all their efforts through these trying times. So that is a problem right there. The second one has always been, for me, work. Uh, jobs, in other words. That's why I was so uh, pleased when we got the hospital, the new hospital in, which by the way, uh, not to pat myself on the back, but I did go to Salem to fight for that doggone thing. And uh, you, you wouldn't believe what they didn't know. But at any rate, um, that supplies good paying jobs. And without decent paying jobs, uh, the housing in and of itself uh, is sort of a moot point if you can't afford it because you don't have a job that you're good at doing uh, and be able to make the money to do it, then it doesn't really make much difference. So jobs have always come very high for me. Third, once again, uh, given the political climate that we see that's going throughout the nation and within our own state, uh, I'm awfully concerned about that. I don't think it's gonna get any better anytime sooner. And uh, I do want to be prepared for it if it happens to come our way. Thank you, Carl. Okay, Tammy. Thank you. Um, the, I want to re remind people that I'm running for mayor and the mayor's primary job is to help the council with their priorities. So the first thing I would like to do is work with the council to have community engagement remotely like this so that we know what's going on it more readily and more on a regular basis. I would like to do a regular check in with the mayor, um, a little different than what Mayor Jake Piper Peeper is doing in Brookings. Um, I don't know how many of you know, but he does like a, a Facebook three or four times a week. Um, I think it's at six o'clock most, most of the time. Um, something like that, but a little bit more interactive like this. 
Um, I'd like to sit down with the council and get a list of their priorities and go over those priorities in their order and then we'll work on getting them done um, instead of waiting to see if they show up on the agenda. Um, I do have videos on YouTube if you would like to learn a little bit more about me um, and I also wanted to mention that um, the hospital was built to a 9.0 earthquake and so it is the specially designed uh, to be resilient and the, when it was built it was the best on the coast and I don't believe anybody has built one better yet. So I think thank everybody for um, watching this tonight and thank you for being here. I thank each and every one of you put, for putting your hat in the ring and for being willing to to run uh, for office and thank you all for being cordial and polite and for showing the federal candidates how it should be done. Okay. Uh, Chip? Thank you, Georgia. Um, first and foremost, I would want to work hard to make sure to maintain our existing in city infrastructure, because um, without without that, we don't have a city. Um, the other one that's kind of near and dear to my heart is, is looking for areas of economic growth in our town. With COVID-19, one of the things that is obvious is that the, the a lot of the working world is, is changing. There are people in town who are starting to get jobs where they're able to work from home. Uh, there's people that, that, because of some of the civil unrest, because the uncertainty, are moving here and bringing that outside money in. That's all going to help our economy. And I think the next step to be looking for is for those those companies that want to move to a small place. Because I think another one or two, one just one more company the size of Freeman Marine that would be want to relocate here put people to work here would do wonders for us. I remember when I was a kid, when the mill had 300 people, e economics weren't that big of a deal. And the third one I, that really needs to be tackled that I'd love to tackle is finding ways to encourage the private sector to be built, putting more investment into low, low income, affordable housing. Um, I've seen a lot of ideas, some of them that, that just got bounced off me a couple of days ago that i haven't had time to digest and and talk intelligently about them but there are whether elected or not I'll share those with share those with the council when I feel like I'm confident enough to understand them anyway and thank you Georgia thank you Le League of Women Voters good luck Beth uh, everybody thank you thank you Beth am I up or is it Jeff Hello? Can you guys hear me? Yes, I can hear you just fine. Am I next? Yes, you okay, are. I'm sorry. sorry. I was, I thought, for <laughs> some, okay. Um, <clears throat> so, housing, housing, and housing. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> um, but housing is the number one issue, and I and I do understand the dynamics, and that it is not necessarily the city's sole responsibility. But it is important to me. It is an issue that is important to me that I would like to pursue, as far as the public-private partnership angle. So, um, and I'm here to learn. I've not served on a city council before, so this is going to be a, a growth and learning experience for me. Um, I'm excited um, and I'm, I love to learn. <laughs> so I look forward to um, becoming acclimated and learning what my role really is. Um, it's one thing to sit here and answer questions um, as a candidate, but it's another to um, fill the seat and to do a good job. So um, my second priority is to learn as much as possible about how to be the best um, counselor that I can and and consensus building is something that I have had some success in in my lifetime my career um, I've, I've had a lot of time working in nonprofits with skinny you know thin margins and and so being creative um, and thinking outside the box is something that I'm accustomed to and I also would like to thank the league and everyone on this meeting and the candidate forum and those who tune in and listen um, and my opponent, Chip, and yes, I agree with Tammy. We, we are a model of how this should work <laughs> for, um, you know, a political exchange or non-political exchange, non-partisan exchange, let's put it that way. Thanks, you guys. Thank you. And, and thank you, candidates. We went over a little bit over an hour here, so I appreciate your indulgence here. 
but this completes tonight's Zoom candidate forum. As mentioned earlier, the candidate forum recordings will be available on channel 182, currycountyvoices.com, lwvcurry.org, lwvor.org, and vote411.org via YouTube. Thanks to these organizations for making them available. And the League thanks you, the candidates, for participating and to the viewers for watching and learning about your candidates. Good evening and good night.